subscription now. You might need to refresh. Cool. All right. Let's actually get cracking. Sorry about that. Um, so, I don't have an exact plan of what I want to actually cat up, but um, I've, got a, I've got a rough idea and we can kind of play it by ear. So, uh, basically, I've got a, um, a monitor stand, which is, it's basically just like this pole with some arms hanging off it, and I want to put a camera mount for live streaming on that same pole, and... Um, And um, a random noise I've not heard before. I'm trying to figure it out. A lot of this is new to me. So I just want to make a camera mount that kind of also mounts to that pole and I can kind of perch it above my um, screen instead of using my inbuilt, inbuilt webcam. So uh, the other thing I also want to do is kind of get some live footage of me using this library because um, that, might, that might be handy. So um, basically the way I like to, if you're familiar with OpenSCAD, that's a lot of different ways of designing parts. A lot of it revolves around using sort of uh, primitive shapes, cubes, cylinders, spheres, things like that. I much prefer working with the polygon um, uh, function, I guess, because that reminds me of, well, it, it seems very similar to the way that a lot of other CAD programs work in sort of this paradigm of having a plane, sketching a 2D shape on that plane, and then extruding um, from that plane. So I am going to kind of go to work from there. So, but I'm also using my own library, which helps me add radiuses to those, uh, to those polygon. So a really quick example is, um, you know, this is normally how I start off with a polygon. It's with three basic shapes, uh, three basic points. So I've got 0, 0, 0, 5, 1, 1, and that is making this triangle of sorts. And, um, and so usually that would be X, X and Y, X and Y, X and Y. But with this library, um, you get a third point where each point you can round. So this one here, I'll just change this to 0 0.3 and we should see that, that round off. So basically the, the edges stay where they were but the, the, um, the shape never quite makes it to the point gets truncated. Um, see that again, goes from this to this. So, and, and, and that's because adding radii or radiuses in um, OpenSCAD can be a real pain in the butt, particularly in internal radiuses, and this library kind of makes it a breeze. So, uh, in order to make this mount, I'll just get cracking. So, I need to make a sort of um, a tube of sorts to actually go on this pole, and I could, um, I could probably just use, get a cylinder and uh, subtract a smaller cylinder from it. But I'm gonna try and be a little bit fancier just for the sake of it and use um, use a rotational extrude just so I can use this library a little bit. So, <clears throat> um, see how we go. So I've got a bit of an idea. I'm, get, I'm thinking about of the, the wall cross section. So uh, let me think, let me think it's gonna look like this. How long do I want it? I should just use a bunch of rough measurements and I can I can hash it out a bit better later. Do I have a, I have a rule around here somewhere? I just want to get some rough ideas. Yeah, here we go. Let's say we make it 100 mil. So let's check, bump this all the way up to 100. And we'll just leave everything is no radiuses for the time being. Then from there, I'll make it 15 mil thick, and then just then we'll just uh, come back home. So we'll change this to 15. So that should just give us a pretty 
pretty simple cube rectangle thing. Uh, I didn't save it. Nope. Nope. Come on. Okay, that looks pretty broken. Why does it look broken? Oh, that's why. <laughs> no, that's not why. Why? I thought. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay, so pretty simple. Um, and then let's just leave that for now. Um, you know what? Let's 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 uh let's keep going here. So I'm just gonna add a little like a narrowing section. So let's go um, back this off a little bit. So uh, let's go 85 and then let's go right in the middle. And then another one, 15 in. So this shouldn't change the shape. It did change the shape. How do I do that? Oh, I know why. Okay. These all need to be. How do I? There we go. Shouldn't change the shape. Yes, there we go. And then this middle one, I'm going to back off a bit. So let's go. Let's pop this back down to zero. So it should kind of dip in. Perfect. Now let's bump that radius right up. It's something real big. Oh, <laughs> okay. Real big. Yeah, let's just let's just get crazy. Cool. Oh yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking will be the shape of the wall. Bit of a bit of a taper in in the middle. Maybe that's a bad idea, but we'll see. So going to jump across. Can never quite remember what I need for these things. So let's. I, I'm after the rotational extrude angle convexivity. Okay. I don't know what the convexivity is. Cannot remember. I very rarely use. Um, this one. Let's just see. So it's got defaults there, so should be okay. So if I just whack this out the front here, what is going to happen? Perfect. Okay, that's interesting. Obviously, I need to bump it off zero in order to um, get an actual internal diameter, which makes sense. Let's go. Um, I probably should try and make this a bit more parametric. So let's say, um, call this thing, so this is going to mount on this pole, call it the brace. Um, call it pole brace. 100, and then let's just see if I can um, do this after the fact. Cool. And um, pole brace will be will be um, verbose. I think it makes sense to me. Um, uh, pole brace, internal dynamo. Uh, I think IR is safe. So let's go with. I don't actually know the diameter of this thing, but I'm going to say it's around 30. Now, if I just go ahead and how do I, here we go, add pole brace IR to all of these. Excuse me. What's that going to look like? Perfect. Okay, cool. Looks like that's working. All right. Um, so next thing I need to do is make the arm. So what am, do I just add it to the side? Now let's, let's do it separately. Let's um, get another polygon going. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's go front this 
out. Uh, what does that look like? Back to this, cool. Um, this so this is going to be the actual arm that the camera sits on. I'm going to say, let's make it, let's make it 150 meters, 150 meters long. So we'll say. Um, arm length and let's just go with um, make it zero zero Just to get something on the board. What's that look like? Looks like nothing. Oh, I know why. I do need these points. Yep, I know why. It's broken. That's happy. If I were to pull these back in, that's happy too. How the hell did I break it? Uh, must be this comma. Um, no, it can't be. Troubleshooting. How have I broken it? It was just completely flat, I guess. Okay, cool. It's there at least. Um, if I bump this down to fifty. I think, I think I know what's going wrong. I was just all, all collinear. Yeah, I was just not thinking about it. Okay, cool. So, I think that makes sense to just have a, um, nice little rectangle, uh, triangle to support the camera. Basically, the camera would sit over here on the right. Um, this probably should be the pole brace. I should probably be height, but we'll leave it just for now. And I'll change this back to arm length. Okay. All right. Uh, that's looking like it'll be pretty strong. So, um, 
what do I want to do with this in terms of putting on the inside of this? I might um, actually use another function that I have handy. I go. So let's actually have a look here at the library. <clears throat> so I'm thinking for the actual arm of the brace that this sort of thing is going to be useful. Um, where I can just define the outside and um, give it a thickness and maybe add some support structure on the inside. So um, it should be as simple as this. So if I add that here, what do we get? Perfect. All right. Um, how thick do I actually want it? Let's just go with five mils, uh, but I do want that to be minus. So this number is, it's the offset from, I guess the perimeter. And so if I wanted to find the outside and then get the thickness from going inside, then I should use a negative number because the negative number sort of travels towards um, the input of the shape. And from what I remember or know, uh, so this shells a 2D child, which a polygon is, is a 2D shape. Um, shells, the, um, shells the first child, but then any subsequent children, it will uh, use to fill the shape. So if I just add a circle, underscore circle, Will this work? Oh, it's probably broken. Nothing's happened. Okay, let's bump this up. Yeah, okay, cool. So uh, let's change this to 75. You can see that the circle is, you know, it's the center of the circle is around the zero point um, right at this corner and it's just filling this shape. So Potentially, I can just steal from another project I worked on where I made this grid pattern. Um, you can actually see it if I go to back to the browser. I think the f main Im this image here, yeah, you can see this grid pattern which um, I used for this this drone design. So let's have a quick. Let's just steal that. Um, It is this project and I've got it locally, but um, would be in modules, I think. This, this is a, a steaming pile of mess. Uh, it like, it, I like the project, but I did not do a very good job of writing clean code. So grid pattern, grid pattern, grid pattern. Okay, I'm just gonna rip this out. Stuff it somewhere. I remember the parameters of this being a little confusing, but it kind of doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna shove that in here and it's got some defaults. So I guess we'll just see what the defaults look like. That. I keep forgetting semicolons, man. So my main <clears throat> my main language is JavaScript, and JavaScript is very forgiving with semicolons. In fact, it's almost entirely option. Well, it is entirely optional. There are only some very edge cases where um, white space can start to play with things where you would need a semicolon. So just out of the habit of putting them in. Wish I had a lint. I would just throw them in whenever I saved. Um, okay, so that's working, but just not particularly well. Um, 
Uh, I think translate still works with 2D stuff, right? If I go 5, 5, is shift, yeah, okay. Um, how big is this thing? It's, let's go, um, go arm length, divide by 2, see what happens, and Uh, these numbers don't really mean much. I just kind of want this grid pattern centered somewhat. And I think that we can make the squares bigger than what they are. So let's go 15. Um, so I can add the amount of iterations which should get us there in terms of coverage. Like if I keep bumping this up, but um, remember width. So I think that's the width of each part, four mils. Uh, yeah, that looks about right. Um, Yeah, I'm reasonably happy with that. Um, should be fine. I guess, the, I mean, it would look nicer. I, I I'm a, have a bit of a soft spot for hexagons. So I've got a square in here, but I could replace it with, um, I could try replace it with, what have I got here? It at times. Oh, do you know what? It's not going to... I'd have to rewrite this to get the hexagons to tessellate properly. Oh, crap. I am... Sorry. Excuse my poor streaming skills. <laughs> Back to this. I have been editing for like five minutes. Okay, so basically I ripped this grid pattern from the, the browser window you just saw. And now... Um, I've been tweaking some of the values a little bit. Oh, I should be changing the defaults. Yeah, to, anyway, to get to get this grid pattern on the inside of this. Cool. All right. Um, that's looking all right. I don't feel the need to stress too much about making this absolutely bloody perfect. So let's just get something. That's the thing about like. So I'm going to 3D print this. Right. So this is for anyone who. Do I have any viewers? Let's see. Let's see. Two. So it's probably me and one other bloke. Um, yeah, so I assume it's probably the same person. But anyway, I'm making a camera mount. I'm going to 3D print it. If it's, if it's bad, I'll just print it again. So let's do a linear extrude. Uh, uh, so I'm looking at the docs. I might, I might end up with the streaming stuff. Just share my screen, and that way I won't have to worry about when I go between browser actually swapping it over on on the streaming software. That aside, okay. So linear extrude. I am just copy and pasting from the OpenSketch website. So I think I should just need to give this a number for how long I want to extrude it. Let's go 15 millimeters. How does that look? Yeah, there we go, some thickness. Looking, looking, looking all right. Okay. Um, what else am I gonna need? The only other thing is Possibly might be good to have, have, so the, this, this pole brace, I'll, I'll pull that up. These things are going to look horribly mashed together. I put them together on screen because I, I need to rotate these stuff. Yeah. Uh, I need to put a slot in this thing in order for it to have a bit of flexibility in terms of actually fitting on the pole. And I need to actually make the camera mount, which should be as simple as a plate with a hole in it. Because if most cameras just have like, I think it might be quarter inch um, bolt hole in the bottom of them. So all, all you need is, is a hole that size and something to screw into it. So that'll be simple. Um, should I start assembling this? 
Yeah, why not? Um, so we'll we'll leave the rotational extrude. We'll keep that as like the center of truth. We just need to um, translate this other thingy. So how do we do that in OpenSCAD? There's a rotate thing, right? Um, transformations rotate. Oh, the, okay, so you can either give it an angle, an X, Y, Z, or, or it's just going to be a 90 degree flip, so we'll go with, we'll go with the first. Or we should get that order of operation as well, like if I put rotate before translate, which one happens first. So we want to rotate it around what? Um, I don't actually have any axes turn on. Let's turn those on. But I don't know which is. I don't know which is X and Y. Let's just wing it. Okay, so. It's either going to be X or Y. So yeah, okay, that was correct. Cool. Except, looks like I want to go the opposite of that. Perfect. All right. Now, if I translate, so I put the translate on the left hand side or the right hand side. And we just rotated it about Y, so I'm guessing we need to translate it on X. Oh, I spelled that wrong. No, it needs to be Y as well. Cool, all right, sweet. I mean, that's too far, but um, let's let's go with the internal, internal diameter, radius. So, oh, this is gonna be too big, isn't it? I was thinking, right, any of doesn't matter. I'll come back to this. That's too long. Uh, Maybe slightly more complicated than I was thinking. Um, let's see. Let's see what happens here. So I find it very confusing with compound um, extrudes. Sorry, not extrude, it's compound rotation. So I normally just will add them together by um, just putting new extrudes instead of trying to come up with what combination of X and Y need to be in there to make this work. So I'm just going to get rid of this, translate again, see what that actually did. Okay, so maybe that needs to be... This is looking good, I think, in terms of this, this uh, arm is now rotated, it's orientated correctly, it just needs a bit of translation, which I did have just now, but it was going the wrong way, so let's just make that negative. So this is, this is how I open scat in terms of, uh, I just plug numbers in until it looks right, you know. And I think we can go a bit more than that. Let's go, um, so I've done this whole, get rid of this trash, this whole, Pole brace. Um, I used 15 a lot, which kind of became my thickness. Let's go with um, brace thickness. Pack. So, you know, this might change later, but putting in a variable makes it trivial to change. One thing that's a bit shit about um, can't use 15. Ah, I've changed the wall, so uh, it's probably not the best though. Whatever. <laughs> Cross that bridge later. 
Um, yeah, this is not the most readable. I, I almost need to tab out X and Y. But then that, that to me seems like an absolute nightmare to maintain because, you know, if you make it longer then they're all gonna need to be tabbed out again. It's a bit gross, but I don't know, maybe maybe this is worth the this is the way to go just I oh, see I did that wrong. Is tab it tab it right out too big in fact so you're unlikely to run into that problem. And that way you can kind of we've got these three columns of X, Y and radius. That's a bit more readable, and I guess if I need to um, do this again, I can do something like that. Yeah, just that, that seems okay. Okay, I'm gonna gonna move this out a little bit more. So kind of the reason why I put this in a variable is because I want to, I think this would be too far because it's gonna start coming outside, but if I just go like 50% of that, it's probably decent. Um, still has to tap to the trunk of the wall here a little bit, so maybe this wasn't worth. I do want to bump it out a little bit, but it's probably okay. Oh, uh, the other thing I need to do though is translate this. Um, okay, so uh, translate this a bit to center it. So currently, I made this. Where was this linear extrude? Uh, okay. Let's um. Hmm. Things are going off screen. Maybe if I do it like this, make everything super expanded. It's probably decent. Yeah, it's readable enough. Um, so the extrude was 15 so uh, let's make that its own thing put that in here with a linear extrude and then that means I can translate it the same amount or now it's going to be minus I think Half of that? No. Okay. Does that look centered to you? Looks pretty good to me. I wish I can get this in the dry. Yeah, it looks pretty good to me. Um, yeah, cool. All right. Um, cool. Come together. Come and together. Come together. And. I'm, I'm not getting too hung up on exact dimensions or anything because at the end of the day I can always um, I can always change these parameters so if this needs to be longer which this seems like it's probably going to be too long in terms of how well it's going to hold up I wonder how, my camera really weighs a couple kilos it's a it's an SLR That's nah, probably fine. Cool. All right. Um, so I need to add a slot in the back, which could be as simple as um, subtracting a cube, and then I need to let's let's work on the work on the actual camera mount, which, like I said, it's pretty bloody simple. Um, what shape does it need to be? Just a circle, I guess. And I should, though, make sure I get enough clearance for the screw to like kind of trap things down. Yeah, I do. Got something I can measure here. We'll 
looks like. If I give it 35, let's say 36 mils, it should be okay. Let's make note of that. So um, 36 mils, I mean, the this like little fastener, it's just a bolt with wings on it, I guess, is, is the wings are about 36 mils. So I just want to make sure I don't obstruct those in the actual base of the thing. So I should put this stuff in a module, I reckon. So module, Global, so it's fine. Just should kill everything. Ah, oh, right. Oh, and then if I call this up here, this should come back. Okay, cool. That is good, makes it easier to separate my work so I can just kill this and then spin up a new polygon. I'm just gonna take this. So, probably don't need to use a polygon for this, but let's do it anyway. So, I need a polygon at all? Probably not. Um, let's see if I just use a, a circle. Will that be okay? Let's um. Oh, it's bloody just where the camera mounts onto. It's just just needs to be a little pad with a circle on it. And for some reason, I'm getting all caught up in nuts. I, I'll, I'll use I'll use a I'll use a bloody polygon just so we can change stuff easily. So I'll just go with a, a bloody square, why not? Um, okay, so uh, let's say camera mount hole D that it needs to be what's a quarter of an inch? I don't in millimeters. I think that'd be enough. Uh, this camera mount clearance. I don't know if I'm gonna need this or not. Doing this bit ahead of time. I haven't done this prior to, but let's say the thickness is going to be 15 millimeters, and that's probably probably all I need. Um, yeah. Let's go. Square, I hope. No, I've done something wrong. Oh, right, there we go. It's a bit laggy. So, um, I might do something kind of silly here, but just elongate it on this side. Yeah, okay, that, that makes sense. Um, 
Yeah, I'm reasonably happy with that. And then I can put a difference here and put a circle in the middle. Difference. Just need a little, little itty bitty hole. should be on the corner, perfect. So if I translate this to be in the center, <clears throat> or maybe it's worth translating. Actually, I'll translate this polygon instead. It mightn't be bad to have the circle in the middle. So um, I want to go half of this. Perfect. Okay. Uh, and this should be. Um, I can do this with as a diameter, right? If I go D for six point five. Yeah. Cool. 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 All right. Um, and then I just need to extrude that a little bit and then whack it on. But first, we'll make it look a little bit nicer. So <laughs> I've been. I've been banging on about, uh, not be banging on, but, uh, I'm using this library around anything that I can add radiuses, but I've not really added any, so let's do that. So I just, really just these two end ones, uh, you can even just 36, what's that, half of that is, half 36, 18. Go pretty big. Let's just go. This is going to turn this a solid radius. Not that one. Change that to that. Oh, okay. Let's done these ones here. Okay, I want these end ones to be 10. Get confused which points are which. Yep, nice. So these ones, I can I can beef these right up because this is a um, because these are really shallow edges, like uh, very obtuse. I guess might be the right word that you can really go crazy on radiuses and they won't have a big impact in terms of how much they cut into the shape. So if I change that to one hundred, like you can or five hundred, you see like it's starting to have an effect. Oh, it's definitely doing something, but it's it's much more subtle compared to if we were to change this to say fifty, and I mean fifty won't even fit in this, in this um. Yeah, it's gonna start messing with the other radiuses. But anyways, let's keep that at ten. Five hundred's ridiculous, but I think fifty might be fine for these. Yeah, cool. I'm oh, happy with a squarish shape. Let's extrude that. Uh, what have we done it before? Then you extrude, just like this. Uh, this should be this guy here. Cool. All right, got some thickness. That is looking very chunky, actually. What did I say? Fifteen. Yeah, that's that's that seems perfect. Okay, let's. Let's just almost whack that in half. That'll be fine. Okay. Cool. Let's um, let's throw that on the rest of the part. So if I reintroduce my actual camera mount, Now I just need to, I might as well throw this into the camera mount. Just need to move that over to where it needs to be, which is on the edge of this thing. So first of all, I'll rotate it. Looks like it's about the Z axis. If 
perfect. First go. Uh, then we need to move it. Now, is it X or Y? Let's find out. It is Y. And looks like it might need to be negative. Okay, cool. So we know what direction we need to move it. Let's do that. How do we do that? I mean, how far does it need to be? It needs to be pretty much this arm length. Um, but that arm length is going to... Um, the arm length is going to be right where the center of that circle is. Uh, but then the the... So this is where it might be useful to to open up the braces of this translate. Shove this arm into it. It should all still be the same. And then I can also shove this into it. And yeah, okay, perfect. So now the circle is right on the right on the center of that. Oh, okay, so what's going on there? I oh, yeah, okay, so maybe that's not such a good idea. So by putting it in the same translate as this arm, um, I get I don't have to do this logic of pushing it out the right amount for this um, into the radius of this this brace thingy but what it's also done is I've also got um, this arm thickness divided by two maybe what I'll do is I'll just grab that and make that zero and then put that here probably Yeah, translate on translate. Yeah, that's, that's what we want. Um, so now I'm thinking that the polygon that does this arm length, I think this should be arm length minus the camera mount clearance, although divided by two, but that's a, cause that's a diameter, but um, Basically, if I specified the arm to be 200 mils long, I'd kind of expect that 200 mils to be right where the center of the camera mounts. So I might just change this arm length to minus that times. So it needs to be divided by two because it's a, it's a diameter, but I'm thinking just add a bit of extra wheel room in there. And then yeah, that looks pretty good. It's a bit funky, but I'm okay with it, I think. Like this, <laughs> this uh, interaction here is a little, a little weird, but I'm not really fussed. I don't know, should I try and make something very elegant? I guess the other option I could go with is, so that's, the thickness of this is eight mil. If I change my shell, where's my shell? If I change this to eight instead, then I'm gonna match that pretty well. Maybe I should do that. Yeah, that looks okay. Well, anyway, I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Um, the other thing I could do, actually, that would be nice. I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna try and get a nice sort of flush radius between like this transition here. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna go back to my camera mount. So what I've done is I put this large camera mount thing, times three, um, in the middle by doing this half uh, camera mount, but I'm gonna get rid of that. And instead, uh, copy each of these and times them by three as well. And 
that way, because these would be the bits on the end that would make these zero that need to have large radiuses. But that way, oh, no, no, that's good. I'm confused. Very good. Oh, no, of course. Okay, okay. So what it needs to be is... Needs to be camera mount divided by two. Minus um, the arm thickness, I believe, divided by two. Very confusing. Okay, that looks good. Um, I'm gonna get rid of this and make this plus. Is that what I want? It is, but it isn't. I think. Make this two. Make this three. And then make these big. That's it's definitely hard to follow what points are which when you're watching someone do this, but I've got an idea in my head. Basically these two points are like the end points, which are somewhere over here. This point and this point are these two here. So I've just added a you know, 50 radius, so now they, they're this sort of curve out uh, in, uh, to kind of match the profile. And then the last two points, this one, these two, these two points next going out are here and here, and then these ones are out in the end are here and here. Actually, I could have, um, maybe it would have been better to mirror this because I'm having to manage like double the points and it's kind of silly, but I don't know, this is, this is working here for now. So I am reasonably happy with that. Um, so the, the reason why I've got this such a big overhang here is um, basically because the, um, and, and maybe this is too much, but yeah, it's definitely too much. But then the nut I'm using, it's got wings on it and it's gonna int like, uh, conflict with this thing if it's too close you won't, won't actually be able to spin it I think I've definitely gone a bit of overkill what I did was uh, the, which was the arm length I think it was yeah I reckon I can definitely bump that back down to two let's just do that it's too much Thing is, I can always print this and if it, if it doesn't quite work, print it again. Okay, all right, I am reasonably happy with that. It's come along. Um, so in case you're curious, what I will end up doing is printing it like this. So, um, so far all of these shapes should print pretty well. Actually, all these 45 degree angles, maybe the printer won't like that too much. I guess one thing I could do would be um, Actually, uh, so let's have a look ski at the scale. Okay, well, I can. Sc it's maybe a bit of a hack, and maybe we should do this a bit more properly. But if I go scale, and I'm going to sc scale um, just one of the axes differently. Uh, wait, that's in under 3D. I assume that the scale is still going to work with 2D, but I, I can always do it after the fact. Yeah, let's, oh wait, I shouldn't do that here. I should do that the grid pattern. 
where the grid pattern's used, which is here. Jam this in here and go one, one point five. That's probably good. So all I've done there is I've steepened the angles of those, um, turned them from squares into diamonds, which is just gonna make it a bit more agreeable printing. I don't know what the angle will be exactly, but I think that's fine. One bad thing about doing that dirty scale that I just did, like just scaling, stretching it, is that I am going to be uh, wrecking my radius, radii, radiuses a little bit. So they look fine, so maybe it's not a big deal. But I would sh assume that these would turn into like the curves on ellipses, I guess. If you scale a circle, does it become an ellipse? I'm not entirely sure. Like technically speaking, if the shape is actually an ellipse, but either way, these might be perfect radiuses in the, there might be ellipse curves, but whatever, they're, they're cur curved transitions. Oh, actually one thing that is not good about this is these really harsh angles um, where the brace kind of meets this, this outer shell. And I thought that I had a way of dealing with that. Let's just, ah, uh, I've done the bloody thing. Been looking at this the entire time, so I've, sc uh, I've scaled the the grid vertically so that the the each of these members is sort of the angles changed to be a bit more vertical because it's going to print it's going to print like this. They print better if they're more print easier if they're the more vertical they are. Um, so I've just had a thought that perhaps that I don't like the sharp angles in here and I'm pretty sure I had a way of dealing with those so I'm going to go back to the browser and hopefully I'll switch back to not the browser. Um, so uh, shell. min internal radius. Okay, let's try this. Where is my shell? Hey, look at that, perfect. Bloody perfect. Nice transitions. Uh, do I like that? Do I want it bigger? Yeah, three, three is looking pretty good. That's, that looks alright. I'm happy with that. That looks nice. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um. Okay. Well, I, I, it's, it's coming along. Really, all that's left to do is make the. Um, the way that it's going to bolt onto the, I've got about half an hour left, so I'll speed this along, but a half an hour should be long enough. So I just need to make the, on the edge of, you see my mouse, you can't see my mouse. I wonder if that's a problem. Have I been referring to things with my mouse? I need a pointer. Anyway, it's something to think about for next stream. Um, I just need to make, so on the opposite side to this arm that I've made. I need to have, or I should have, some little wings that protrude out so I can put bolts through. Um, and then I need to put a slot in the back of the ring so that it can slip onto this pole. I can tighten up the bolts and then I'll clamp to the pole so it won't slide up and down. And 
I'm thinking the way I'll do that in a way that will look consistent and kind of flow well is um, is by just using this same shape that I've used for the the edge of this. So, which means I want to reuse some points, which it's good. Um, it's good reuse. So, well, what was that? That was my rotate. Uh, no, it was rotate extrude. Okay, it was this. So I am going to be so bold as to grab these and put those in a variable up here somewhere. I might throw them at the top just so they're out of the way, kind of, in that I'm not going to interfere with my... So I'm going to use const, um, const <laughs> in JavaScript land. Um, how do I do a variable? Don't No variable declaration, just declare it. Uh, what am I going to call this bloody thing? Mm. Brace profile? Yeah, that's good. I like that. Perfect. works right not broken oh it is broken how's it broken ah you know why semicolon <laughs> still unhappy ah bloody hell tells me it is line 59 which is the one I just was mucking about with brace profile equals all of that. Ah, I don't know what the problem is. What is its problem? Not this, I just always get worried about are common dangles allowed? Like giving me an error, it's just not existing. It's like the it's unaware of this these points. I can just assign points to variables, right? Like a, an array, surely. This seems like a su super silly thing to be troubleshooting. spelled it correctly. I am going to open up my browser once again and have a look at the actual flipping my actual library because I actually want that to stay there. Because I know I have examples where I've got points like this. Is it that it's in the global scope? I, I, I can't imagine that would be a problem though. Try this. Try something super silly. It's like exactly what I'm doing here. 
Okay, I'm getting tied up on something silly. I'll just bloody copy and paste the points. Duplicate them, it's fine. I can fix it up later. So silly. Why? Why, why, why? Oh. Can I fix it that? Uh, that looks fine to me. I do not know. Um. Okay, so it's happy again. Good, good. It's a little annoying, but anyway. I'll see if I can keep this here. If I add a uh, poly polygon. And I come out this mount. What do we get? Syntax error. Line 13. No semicolon. Oh, okay. I think I know what the problem was. Try to put it out of the way by putting it on top. But, of course, that puts it above a lot of these variable declarations that it depends on. That makes sense. I'm a dummy dumb. Uh, although I find the OpenSCAD language to be a bit weird. You can't reassign variables. Like if you make a circle, anyway, I'm not gonna go on that rip. I, f I find it's like it's, no, I'm going to try to tend to go on a rant about things I don't love about the language, but I'm not going to. Uh, okay, so this was it here, hey. Um, let me just... Okay, so that has given me that. Perfect. And if I bring my mount back in, now using this variable, that's there too. Okay, cool. We're back. We're, we figured it out. Well, I figured it out. I figured out my own stupidness. Um, so, I am going to make this a function instead. Functions, again, weird in OpenSCAD, uh, they can be useful. I tend to go with that one. can be useful for certain things. They they don't produce parts. Oh wait, am I, I don't know if I'm speaking correctly, but I don't know, syntax is funky. Base profile. Oh, I need to see an example. How do I do a function? So I can just put in, so what I'm wanting to do is sort of uh, increase the overall thickness of this. And I think I want to do that by, not overall thickness, I mean how far it comes out from the back of the part. Uh, so let's say, I'm just gonna call it extension, whatever. And make that default zero, which should mean that uh, with my other base profile down here, I turn this into a function and then 
turn this into a function, so that should still work. And then if I have a look see at this, it should still be working. Okay, cool. And um, now I want to add this variable in to here. Okay, I think that's right. Boop, 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 plus extension. and make this 15. Perfect, that's exactly what I want. So basically, I just want this to hang out the back end a little bit. Um, yeah. In other news, just looking at this now, so what have I got that's really messed with my tabbing? Which is fine. How much is that going off screen? Fair bit. Um, I'm thinking that what is this pole brace? No, is that what that is? Pole brace. Should have oh eighty five. That must be what that is. No, no, no. Yeah, I should. I'm trying to see what this. I got one big radius in here, right? Like that was kind of the point. Um, must be that pole brace. I'm at thirty. Is that right? I make this 50. Put this. Sorry, this. I think I'll do this is there. Yeah, it's hard. I think I want to make the ones on either side of this have some. I don't want everything to have a minimum. Just adding radiuses in to this. So, just to give it a bit more of a fluid shape. That, that's, that seems reasonable. Um, this could be bigger, actually. So if I have a look at 50 might be a bit too big. Oh, it actually makes it, that makes sense. Um, if I have a look at my 3D shape now, how long have I got 15 minutes? It should be a bit more curved, which, yeah, should just make it a bit softer to touch. These are gonna be a bit harsher here, but that's okay. Actually, I do have a trick for that, but I'm not going to bother right now. Not going to bother right now. Cool. So, just need to bring this guy in. So, um, call these wings. Wing gap equals five wing. Yes, equals eight, let's do that. And we are going to then you extrude and at times it it's going to be wing thickness times two plus wing gap. The reason being is that we're going to slice through, um, slice through the middle of this to give it the two sides. Hopefully that makes sense. So now it's time to bring this into the fold and try and locate it amongst its brethren. 
cool. So it needs to be rotated about, let me say Y, gonna get Y. Compound rotations scare me for some reason. So now I'm going to translate it uh, to get it centered, and that needs to be on what axis? I don't know. It was confused. Like I said, I don't. I always get confused by the order of operation. So as to what axis I'm actually fiddling with now, I'm like, oh, I don't know. Okay, that looks right. So I just basically need to center it. Can just take this, divide that by two. Needs to be negative though. Cool. All right. Now all I need to do is diff, diff that. Okay. I really should try and make this more vertical see what's going on. Yeah, it looks better. So let's go with different. And then it's going to pop F. Oh, I really need to put in a union, don't I? Yeah, I do. Okay, so everything needs to go inside that. Every little thing. means that I should pop it out. Yeah, okay. Just feeling very cramped here, for sure. It should still look the same, good, good, good. And then um, that means that I've got a cube here of, that's quite large. Should no oh, semicolon's come to get me again. Cool. All right. So something's happening there. So let's say this cube is clearly that ten should be this gap. And the rest, I'm just gonna. I'm just not gonna think about it. Make a massive good that looks, that looks perfect actually um, I just need to I don't feel like I sent it true but what happens is that going to work for my use case yeah happy with that oh no not really because then it starts cutting into the other side um, you know what it's fine just bump it out a bit This one. Yes. Okay. Well, we are we are ninety percent there. I've got ten minutes to go, and I'm pretty happy with that. That looks nice. <laughs> it's just a, I wasn't really thinking about going for this hourglass look, but I don't mind it actually. Um, so I still need to put I still need to put holes here and here for bolts but um, and another thing that might be worth doing is if I don't know which one it will be if I just start playing with random uh, eh, here we go random radiuses if I bump this up to a random large number which one is that <laughs> okay that's not what I want this one I have no idea what that was, I didn't see any changes. Oh, I think I know what it was actually. Let's try the next one. 
Okay, that's what I'm after. Um, let's call this. Uh, I don't know, bad name. Again, make this default to what it was originally. And that way I can here I can make this big ish. Cool, so it's rounded that. Yeah, that's perfect, that's what I want. And I just need to do the same thing for his mate, which should be I think it's this one, I'm just gonna guess. Perfect. Oh, does that look worse? Well, I guess maybe I've made it too big. Um, maybe if I make this say still bigger, but I just thought that that very square angle was not particularly appealing. Oh, how did that, tank? that looks too like I don't know, gross and bubbly. But five looked too small. Yeah. Okay. That that. Mm, I shouldn't get too hung up on this set because this thing. No one's going to see it, but yeah, we're kind of happy with that. So I need to put, I need to put, so I need to put holes here for the bolt and it would be good if I put a little, um, nut capture, probably not going to finish that in the next seven minutes. Um, on oh, this is, I might bump this back up to 40. But I'm starting to see a gap there, which I'm not liking. what happens come down a little bit ah whatever I'll, I'll deal it's fine um what I might do is where's my linear extrude well I've got a few of them at this point so maybe I should have put these into separate modules for naming purposes because now I'm trying to find things by what functions I used which is not the best way but I might swap this out for some something else um, so if I go extrude, extrude with the radius length Let's give this a whirl. Let's give it a cracker. Just gonna swap this out and give this radius of two and two. And didn't like that. Okay. Made it awfully jittery. This doesn't look particularly pretty, but it will print fine because it's got a got a radius on this, which means that possibly we'll also take my mount do the same thing with this. Oh, I see. Oh, okay, that's <laughs> it's done this. Which, mm, nah, let's not do that. 
I don't need, I don't need a radius on bloody everything. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's grab this again. And this must be what I'm after. Two, two, ten. So the ten is like how many sub parts? the things divided into and is it gonna work for me definitely slow things down so I wonder if I um, yeah I, what, what I might do is change this to zero that way Not perfect, but it's pretty good. I'm, I'm reasonably happy with that. I haven't actually, I'm not sure if I've tried printing with, um, with these kind of hacked radiuses or not, but I'm willing to give it a go. Let's give it a go. Cool, well, I pretty much am gonna wrap it up there. Kinda need to stop now. Um, if anyone is, watching this after the fact and wants to see this thing printed after I put the holes in it and actually get the bloody camera on it um, probably just say follow me on Twitter um, and I'll post it but yeah I hope that gave you a bit of idea of well I hope you maybe enjoyed this but also the library and its use um, very much me figuring it out as I go along I mean I, I'm familiar with the library but it's actually been a while since I've done some open, open sketch stuff. Um, the library actually came up with ages, made ages ago. I've just been tweaking it a bit recently. Um, yeah, cool. Well, thanks for 